Hello, everybody. Once again, it is Tuesday and it is story time with Teacher Cole. For those who don't know me, I am Teacher Cole. I am the owner of Teacher Cole's English Corner and I am also a private online teacher. Today's story is going to be a very interesting story, a story I love very much. This will be the retelling of a very popular fairy, not a fairy tale, a folk tale from Norway called the Billy Goat's Gruff. It is a very interesting retelling. It is from the Osborne Young Readers selection, and it is retold by Jane Bingham. So I really hope you enjoy this version of the popular folk tale. So let's begin. The Billy Goat's Gruff, retold by Jane Bingham, illustrated by Daniel Postgate. Chapter one, on the farm. We're the Gruff Brothers. Once upon a time, three billy goats lived on a farm in the shadow of a mountain. They were brothers and their last name was Gruff. Beanie was the youngest. He was small and skinny, always hungry. Watch out! And always in trouble. Birdie was the middle brother. He was crazy about sports. Oops! Biffer was the oldest. He was big and strong and looked after his brothers. Stop fighting, you two. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Isn't he great? Chapter two, time to go. One winter, there was very little food on the farm. I'm so hungry, moaned Beanie. I've only eaten a piece of hay today, Fibber, said Bertie. I saw you at the clothesline earlier. You ate two socks and a shirt. <gasps> Clothes don't count. Biffer was worried. I think it's time we made a move, he said. We'll starve if we stay here. Where will we go? asked Beanie. To the juicy fields beyond the hills, Biffer replied. No one lives there, so we'll have plenty of food. We just have to cross the rushing river. Bertie looked terrified. <gasps> we can't go over the river, he cried. That's where the terrible troll lives. He's got eyes like saucers and a nose as long as a poker. He's huge and green, said Beanie. He'll gobble us up. Don't be silly, Biffer said. There's no such thing as trolls. That's farmyard talk. Just think of the juicy fields. Chapter three, setting off. The Billy Goat Scruff spent a week preparing for their adventure. Biffer found an old map to show them the way. A goat's guide to the mountainside. Then Beanie and Birdie had to learn to climb up hills. Oof. Beanie was better at coming down. After a few days, 
they were both excellent climbers. Look at me! Show off. Finally, the brothers had to pack for their journey. Things we need. Map. Compass. Hay. Water. Ball. At last, the Billy Goats Gruff were ready to set off. All the other farm animals came to say goodbye. Good luck. Bye, Beanie. Don't forget us. The younger animals wanted to go too, but the older ones shook their heads. Let's hope they make it past the bridge, they muttered. Chapter four, Into the Forest. Birdie and Beanie were still dreaming of the juicy fields as they left the farm. Ahead of them loomed the dark forest. I'm not sure I want to go in there, said Beanie. We'll be fine, said Biffer, as long as we stick together. What's that thudding noise? It's Birdie's ball. The billy goats trotted along the path. The only sound was the tap, tap, tapping of their hooves on the forest floor. Suddenly, a thick mist swirled around them. I can hardly see my feet. Beanie shivered. I don't like this forest. It's spooky, he said. Don't you think there might be ghosts here? Yes, said Bertie with a grin. Lots of ghosts. And more than anything, ghosts like scaring little billy goats. Ooh! Ha! Ah! Shut up, Bertie, said Biffer sternly. Stop scaring Beanie. The billy goats walked on in silence. Um, Biffer, Beanie said after a while. Yes, Beanie. I think someone's following us. Listen. The billy goats stopped and listened. They strained their ears and heard a thumping sound. It grew louder with every second. Oh no, shrieked Beanie. Look behind us. A strange shape was coming down the path and it was heading straight for them. It's a ghost. Run, cried Birdie. Run for our lives. Before Biffer could stop them, Beanie and Birdie had raced off down the path. We've got to stick together. Come back, Biffer shouted. It's not a ghost. It's a... Biffer waited as the shape slowly appeared out of the mist. It's only a rabbit, he said. Don't be so rude. I'm not only a rabbit, said the rabbit. I'm a rare breed of tall, lop-eared rabbit. And my name is Buffy. I'm Biffer. Nice to meet you, said Biffer quickly. But I must find my brothers before they get lost. Sorry, no time to chat. Where are you going? Buffy asked. To the juicy fields by the mountains, Biffer called, running after his brothers. Watch out for the troll, Buffy shouted after him. Biffer didn't hear. He had already headed deeper into the forest. Oh dear, no one's ever made it past the troll. 
Chapter five, tricking the troll. Hello, anyone there? Meanwhile, Birdie was wandering alone, alone through the forest. He had lost Beanie in the mist and he didn't know which way to go. Beanie had been luckier. He had found the path that ran straight through the forest. Phew, that was close. I can't wait to get to the juicy fields, Beanie thought as he headed to the river. The only way to cross the rushing river was over a little wooden bridge. Next to the bridge was a big wooden sign. Warning, goats beware. I wish I could read, thought Beanie. His hooves went clippity-clop, clippity-clop over the bridge. But as he reached the middle of the bridge, help! A large green hand smashed through the wooden planks and grabbed Beanie's leg. Beanie screamed, who's that going over my bridge? Roared a terrible voice. I'm coming to gobble you up. Let go! Beanie's eyes bulged with terror. There, crouched under the bridge, was a fat and warty troll. Please don't eat me, cried Beanie. I'm only a little goat. My big brother is coming behind me. He'll be much tastier than me. I'm sure you'd rather eat him. I think I can wait a little longer for my dinner, said the troll. Now get off my bridge. Shaking with fear, Beanie wobbled off the bridge and went to hide in some bushes. I hope Birdie can save himself, he thought. Chapter six, Birdie on the bridge. Birdie arrived soon after and trotted onto the bridge. Clappity clop bonk, clappity clop bonk. He was bouncing his ball. Who's that bouncing over my bridge? Bellowed the troll. Oh no. Birdie peered over the bridge and gulped. I didn't think trolls were real, he said. I'm real and I'm hungry, said the troll. And I'm coming to gobble you up. I don't want to be dinner. You'll make a very tasty meal, the troll went on. Nice, fresh billy goat. Yum, yum. Stop, cried Birdie, thinking quickly. You can't eat me. I'm only a medium-sized billy goat. My big brother is coming behind me. He's much fatter. What big teeth he has. Hmm said the troll, rubbing his stomach. I'll wait for the fattest one then. He had better be juicy. Mmm, crunchy horns. Chapter seven, Brave Biffer. At last, Biffer came out of the forest when he spotted his brothers on the other side of the river, he raced to the bank. Beanie and Birdie leaped out of the bushes, waving their hooves wildly. Don't go over the bridge, Biffer! Troll! Stop, Biffer! They cried. Stop! There's a troll under the bridge! It was too late. Biffer was already crossing. 
His heavy hooves went clunkety-clop, clunkety-clop, and the bridge strained under his weight. By the time the troll was starving. Who's that stomping over my bridge, he roared. I'm going to gobble you up. But Biffer stood his ground. I'm an enormous billy goat, Biffer said, and I'm ready for a fight. Biffer lowered his head and caught the trolls on his horns. Ah! He bounced the troll into the air. Then, with a toss of his head, Biffer whacked him into the rushing river. The troll landed with an enormous splash. He sank under the water and was never seen again. Beanie and Birdie couldn't believe it. You're the best, Biffer, they cried. Just then, a stream of animals came out of the forest. Deers, squirrels, rabbits, and foxes. In a large crowd, they skipped across the bridge. <gasps> Thank you, our hero. I hope there'll be enough food. Where are you going, Biffer asked a rabbit. We're off to the juicy fields, she replied. We've been trapped in the forest for years because of the troll. Now, at last, we're free. And this is the end of our story for today. I hope you enjoyed this old folktale of the Billy Goat's Gruff. What did you learn from today's story? What folktales have you read before? Join me again next Tuesday for another story time with Teacher Cole, where I read a new children's story for everyone to enjoy. Feel free as always to join my group, Teacher Cole's English Corner, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a good week. <laughs>